Hi, my name is Tim Bennix and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I'll show you how to create a badass development environment. Now let's roll that intro. Before we start the video, I want to thank everybody who already subscribed even after two videos. You guys are just awesome. Every video about web development that I create on this channel will go into the programmer series. What is a programmer you say? A programmer is this combination of a developer and a dude. A programmer would sip protein shakes and do weightlifting sessions in between coding. Right Nowadays, everybody is a programmer. Everybody who codes JavaScript or does fancy stuff on the web is kind of a cool kid. But then you have me. I'm this old guy. I'm considered to be a dinosaur in this industry. I would consider myself to be the original programmer. Enough jibber jabber, onto the good stuff. So I'll show you the tools that I use to get a great developer experience. At work, I use a Mac, but at home, I use a PC. But I figured out all these tools that I love so much at work, but I also wanted to run them exactly the same at home on my PC. As it turns out, you can run Linux on your PC now. It's an official package called WSL by Microsoft. This is just awesome. So once I installed that, I can actually run all my whole tool chain in this virtualized um, environment on my Windows machine. This is just great. So if you want to install that for yourself, um, there's a link in the description to, uh, to explain how to do that. First things first, your IDE or your text editor. This is the heart of your system. This is where you write your code. So being a dinosaur in this industry, I have gone over a lot of IDEs in my time just to find the one that feels right for you in, your, in that context. So I've written a list because I couldn't remember all of them. So let me just read them to you and be amazed of the amount of stuff I've had to try over the years. So I've used Notepad, Vim or VIM, TextMate, Eclipse, NetBeans, WebStorm, PHP Storm. Um, Sublime Text 2, Sublime Text 3, Notepad++, BB Edit, Coda, Text Wrangler, Brackets. Approximately 10 hours later. And now I use VS Code by Microsoft. It's the best text editor. There it is. I said it. And I'm going to get some hate for this maybe, but maybe not. You know what? For me, at this moment, it is awesome. So let me show you why. So this is my VS Code. Um, I'm recording this on my Windows PC, so as you can see in the bottom here, I'm connected to WSL Ubuntu, which is my virtualized Linux. The app actually runs from there. Um, because of that, you'll also see that if you look at the um, installed extensions that I have, they're actually installed in Ubuntu because I'm running it from there, so it needs to have access there. Um, let's first have a look at the plugins I use and after that on how the, the IDE actually looks. So initially you will see two Azure plugins that I use because I use, I do Jamstack and serverless stuff quite a bit. So to be able to be logged in through my IDE and to do stuff on the cloud from the IDE, I have those two plugins. Um, for the core of what I'm showing you today, you don't need those, but I use them all the time. So they're still there. So let's go to the base of my um, development experience, which is editor config. This is a great little plugin that I think VS Code should have had by default, but I don't know why it doesn't have it. But anyways, you can download it here. It basically overrides the user settings for the workspace and how it deals with files for everybody in your project. So if you open a file like that, so you can see actually each file needs to have a certain identification style, a certain identification size line endings, character set, all of that. And you can see for me, for example, Markdown has one thing that's a little bit different than the rest of the files. This can be a little bit more elaborate. And the moment you use with different coding languages in one project with different people, this actually helps you a lot. Next is ESLint. So we all know and love ESLint, but it's generally in the build system rather than in your IDE. But because it's in your build system, there's this extra configuration file. So ESLint in your IDE will look at that config file and in line while you are coding, it will show you your mistakes or it will auto fix your mistakes. Like when I remove this space and I hit save, it actually auto fix that for me. This is great. 
So next, GitLens. GitLens changed my life as a developer um, on the performance side of things. Um, not performance of the IDE, but of me myself, right? So all those extensions and plugins that I use are either to make me not have mistakes as much, plus it makes me faster. So if I want to know when I added a certain line and what was actually um, the commit, there it is. I select the line and you can even see here on that line, what did I change? All the commit information. So this is like kind of in line into your IDE. It helps you to do Git stuff. And it adds a whole bunch of icons here and it even goes further and giving you all information about Git. I don't use this as much myself. I tend to do Git in the command line, but this helps you a lot with giving you good overview. So next one, Prettier. Prettier is very similar to the ESLint configuration that I use. Um, or not configuration, I mean plugin. Uh, Prettier tends to be in your build system, in your webpack, and it does the stuff it needs to do. Um, but I've seen sometimes when I work with something that has Prettier, especially in Vue.js, in my template side of things, when I start coding and I want to see something quickly, Prettier keeps saying, hey, that's not correct, that's not correct, fix it, fix it. And it keeps on going. And sometimes it takes me five minutes to figure out, oh yeah, but why did you want that space here? But there here you want five spaces and stuff like that. If you just install this tool and you hit, you make it, sh make sure that it auto saves and auto fix. So when I click save, it just fixes the, the prettier stuff. So again, this makes me faster. And then we have feature. Feature is one of my favorite plugins if you want to use Vue.js. I work with Vue.js all the time. So having this um, enhance my experiences, enhances my experience by a lot. It has syntax highlighting, snippets, emit abbreviations, formatting stuff, auto completion. It's basically the tool to use if you use Vue.js. It's amazing. Okay, so now we've talked about the feature set, which is very small and minimal, but it's all you need. It's about being fast and making less mistakes. That's what this does. Now let's have a look at how it looks, which is the same. It's about making less mistakes, being able to look at your screen for a long time. That is generally, um, for me, the most important part because I might code in, code in the middle of the night or in the morning or a very long duration. So it's all about accessibility. How does this look? Is it not too drastic in, the, um, in, in how many colors it has and um, how dynamic it looks? This one looks very calm to the eyes and the font is really smooth. It's, this is just a great experience to do coding. So when I tried to create this, I spent hours and hours to do my own. And then I just Googled around a little bit and I found Night All. This is by Sarah Dresner. Thank you, Sarah. This is freaking awesome. I installed it, good to go. Um, it uses the Dank Mono font. Um, I managed to get that and put it in and everything just worked together. This is just great. On top of that, I have a couple of small things, like I have the bracket pair colorizer, which basically means when I select this one, um, first of all, it highlights, but also you can see different brackets actually have different colors. So here they're yellow, there they're pink. So it's much easier to distinguish your brackets, especially in JavaScript, that's what you want. And then on top of that, I wanted to have some icons and the mat material theme by Google has great icons. So you have a few icon, we have a folders icon, all of that stuff. Great, great, great. Um, it just is, as you can see, it's very simple, but this really helps me to do proper code. Um, on to the terminal, next. So this is my terminal. So as a terminal, I'm using hyper.js. Um, I use Hyper both on Mac and on Windows, and it's based on Electron, just like VS Code. And because of that, I can run it everywhere. Um, being on my uh, Windows computer, I'm actually running it through the Linux distribution, just like VS Code before. And you can see that because I'm actually in Mount C. If you want to use a drive in Linux, you have to mount it. So I actually mounted the C drive of my Windows PC and I went into the work folder where I found my project. Um, Hyper is very fast, small and extensible. It installs stuff from NPM, so it's super cool. So I'll show you um, uh, how I set it up. So first, other than on how it looks, let's go into the plugins that I use, which is in my case actually very little because it does everything I needed to do. 
I actually use hyperlinks, which is a very simple plugin that when it finds a URL, you can actually control click it and you go to a browser and see that URL. That's all I needed basically, um, because most of the meat of all the functionality comes from another thing that I'll show you in a sec. Um, the next plugin is Hyper Night Owl, which is the Night Owl theme that I also have in VS Code, because stuff needs to look the same for me. I love that. The only thing that's different in this theme on how it looks is actually the font family. I don't use Dank Mono like um, Night Owl uses, but I use Roboto Mono for Powerline. I have this because of how this here looks. Those arrows should align up properly. If I use a different font, that doesn't work. So actually let's go into why I use those, um, how I get these arrows and how I get this to look that nice. Because this here actually shows me where I am in Git. If there are changes or I have to do a pull or a push, it shows me everything here, which is super handy while you're working, right? You can always see, oh, in this folder I have a change, so I have to check what happened there. How to get this? I actually use something called set sh which is basically the base runner of your terminal. On Windows, you have like um, CMD or other stuff. And on Mac, you also have Bash and you have a bunch more, but you also have set sh. And this is what I chose to use on both systems because it gives you slightly extra things. So I'll show you um, the configuration I have for that. I just have set sh rc. So even that auto completion comes from ZSH. So I just opened my configuration. As you can see, that is like super small. So to set up ZSH, I've actually used something called Oh My ZSH, which is a super handy tool to, that wraps everything on ZSH and makes it very easy to use because it goes quite deep in its complexity. So if you want to use ZSH with its fancy features, just use Oh My ZSH and you're good to go. The theme I use is called Agnoster um, and the plugins I use are only Git. Um, so basically um, what this theme provides you with is this awesome stuff. So you can, you can select what you want to see on every line. You can do a lot of things. You can even see the RPM of the fans on your video card or you can see how the load of your processor is like all of these things you can put on these lines for me i chose to just have the name my computer where i am and git keeping it simple but working really really well um that's it for the for for the terminal um the way i actually uh, i'll show you that quickly the way i actually um run it into set as h by default is by actually selecting which shell you want. So I'm actually setting my shell to bash and in the configuration of my um, my setup, it automatically always opens with set as H. So it could also have been bash, but that makes that work for me. Um, and that's it. So there we have it. As you can see, it's a very simple and considered system. Over time, I shaped it to what it is now, minimalist. And you don't need the hassle of configuration that doesn't scale or has issues. Also, I need to share it between my PC and my Mac or when I get a new system, it needs to be able to run there. All in all, all I need is just to be less error prone and to be faster. If you've made it to this far in the video, awesome. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please consider giving it a like or even subscribing. And if you have anything to say or give me some feedback, please consider writing a comment down below. Bye.